Hey everybody, Tim Vandegrift here. And today I want to talk about rosé wine. Now a lot of people think rosé is a pink wine that's not very serious, but the fact is that rosé is one of the most serious wines in the world. Up until the 17th century, all red wines were pretty much rosé. They didn't have the technology to macerate the grapes for extended periods and then press them hard to get a dark red wine. So what they wound up with was something that was at best a deep pink or a very, very light red. Now, the thing about rosé in the modern sense is that it's like a white because it's refreshing, it can be crisp, it can be fruity, but it's like a red in that it's got the body and the aromatics and the flavors to stand up to a wide array of foods. It's really an ideal kind of a wine. Perfect for patios, I should say. Now you can make your own rosé a number of different ways. The most commonly known way is to crush red grapes, let them sit on the skins for a very short period of time, and then press them, and you get a light pink juice. Now that's only one way to do it. The other ways include saigné, where you take a red crush that you're going to use to make a red wine, and you bleed off part of the juice because you want the remaining skins to make a super dark red wine with the remaining juice. And you take that portion off and instead of throwing it away or blending it away, you turn it into rosé. The other thing you can do is to make a vin gris where you don't soak the skins at all. You just crush red grapes and press them right away. And that's pretty much how they make champagne out of Pinot Noir grapes, which is a white wine made from red grapes. But one of the best ways that you can make rosé is to take your existing cellar and do a blend. Take a good white wine with a nice fruity character and some good acidity, something with a little bit of zing to it, and blend in a red that has some decent tannins and a nice red color. Not too much oak, because oak doesn't really lift up rosés in a great way, but if you have oak in your wine, don't worry about it. So if you rummage through your cellar and you've got a Pinot Grigio or a Sauvignon Blanc or a Riesling, those are excellent bases. And if you've got something nice and fruity like a Merlot or perhaps a Carmenere or even a Cabernet Sauvignon or a Pinot Noir, you've got what you need to create your own rosé straight from the wines that you already have. Now the best way to do this is to do some bench trials. Bench trials are where you take uh, a series of small samples and adjust them at a known rate and then you can scale up from there to the amount that you want. The easiest way to do bench trials is with graduated cylinders that are in metric. Now if you're in Myanmar, Liberia, or the United States of America, you're not on the metric system, which is a little too bad because metric is the easiest way to do the math for blending rosé. But don't despair. If you don't have graduated cylinders and you don't have um, something like a syringe for, for very accurate milliliter measurement, your baking cupboard will have some measuring spoons. Standard tablespoon, 15 milliliters. Standard teaspoon, 5 milliliters. You can get by with that. And your standard measuring cup will almost certainly be marked off on the opposite side with milliliters. One cup, 250 mil. One fifth of a cup, 50 mil. It's awesome. You can. So let's get right to it and blend us some rosé. And we're ready to blend. First up I've got my Sauvignon Blanc base wine, I've also got my red wine which is a Merlot, three blending cups, and I've got a graduated cylinder here, uh, and another one in the background, the other thing I'm going to use for measuring. If you don't have those, you can get away with using a measuring cup or um, the teaspoons that I talked about earlier, and they work pretty well, all marked off nicely in milliliter segments. Uh, probably the most useful to you will be the 15 mil, which is the tablespoon measure, and the 5 mil, which is the teaspoon measure. Also useful is a syringe. Um, this one's a gigantic one intended for injecting marinades into turkeys and pork roasts and things. Not terribly useful. Nah, I wouldn't be using anything like that. So let's get rid of it. Get yourself a medical syringe. These are available in pharmacies, also in winemaking shops where they sell them for things like sulfide and acid tests. They're not expensive and they're highly accurate. So if you're going to be dosing something, this is the one that you really want to use. So we're setting up our base wines here. And I'm going to be putting 100 ml of the base into each of the blending glasses. Now in a winery, you do this with dozens and dozens of glasses, maybe 100.
because you'd want to run all these trials side by side and have samples to show off to a panel of experts who would then judge them. Uh, for our purposes, we're going to get really close with only a few tries. It's not, uh, we're not selling this, so we don't have to make it super pretty for the customers. We're doing it for ourselves. I'm starting my blending by putting two mil of the red into one of the glasses just to see where we're at. Small change, not what I'm looking for. I'm going to go up to three mil for the other glass. We'll have a look and see how that does. Three mil out of 100 is 3%, and that's definitely giving it much more color. That's quite noticeable, but it's not where I want it to be. I want a nice, healthy pinkish red. So rather than set up a whole bunch of different trials, I'm going to work on these two glasses uh, on the left-hand side and compare them to the base glass in the far right. Now I'm putting another two mil into the glass which originally had two mil in it, so we're going up to four mil. So that's one ahead of the one on the extreme left if you're following along at home. So here we go. Put in the extra two mil, so we're up to four. And does that do the job? Mm, it's better. Not quite there yet. So let's grab another two mil, and that will put the one at the end at six mil. Yeah, I was not writing this down in between, but doing the math in my head. That does look quite a bit better, and yet it is still just a light pink. So another two mil, and we will be up to seven mil in the glass in the middle. Seven percent blend. Hmm, not bad. You know what? I really think it can go further, though. It's good. Not quite what I need yet. Two mil more, and we will be up to eight mil in the end glass. And at 8%, we're getting a really good look. I quite like that. Let's see what happens when we go just a little bit further. Now we're up to 9 mil in that middle glass, and mmm, that's showing some real color. The red and the yellow together have a bit of an orangey hue. If we go just a bit further, just a little bit further, and up to 10, look at that. The orange is overcome, and we are now at a healthy, rosy pink color. Will more help? Well, let's find out. I'm going to leave the one in the end at 10 mil, and dose the one in the middle up a couple more. It's up to 11 now. Let's see if we can continue to push it. Two mil at a time, and we'll take it up to that from the base there. Not sure why I pointed at it again. Let's take it up to 13. Still looking good. I'm not sure it's improving a ton. Might well be time to look at it in a wine glass to get a proper judgment of the real hue serving it in the real world. So, left or right, looks better than the base. Let's have a look. It's important to have a nice wine glass because the blending glasses don't give you a great view. I mean, they're good for judging the difference between the two, but a wine glass is where you're going to be serving it, and it's where you're going to be looking at it the most. Give it a swirl, have a look. Mmm, that looks pretty good. So this is where the whole metric thing really comes in handy. 100 mil took 13 mil to color up, so that means in one liter we'll need 130 mil, but in 750 milliliters, a standard bottle, we need 0.75 times 130 mil, which is just shy of 100 milliliters, which was what I had in that small flask. And voila, like that, we've scaled up our blend. Now we have a little bit more than 750 milliliters, so when we go to put it in the bottle, there's going to be a dividend left over. Woe is me. What will happen to that wine? Shall I waste it and throw it down the drain? Uh, no. That's not what's going to happen to it. So we're only bottling one bottle of wine today. If we were doing a lot more, say a carboy full, we would be doing extra calculations, blending things in, and then we'd be bottling using a proper bottling wand and whatnot. Since it's only just one bottle and I'm using a flip top, I grabbed a funnel out of the drawer, sanitized it, along with the bottle and everything else, and it's ready to go. And like that, I've made a bottle of rosé out of two wines I had in my cellar, and it's delicious. We'll flip the top on, 
and then it'll be ready to set aside. It needs a few days to calm down, maybe a week or two, but this one's just going to go into the fridge for me. The secret to rosé is that the tannins make the wine seem a little bigger, a little bolder, and they make it go much better with food. This will stand up to roast chicken, it'll even stand up to lamb, pasta dishes, meat sauces, anything like that. Very versatile. It's also Whether it's a lovely light pink rosé like this, or something a little more substantial, or even something just a little bit orangey, it's up to you. It's your wine. Enjoy it. And have a happy rosé day. Remember, with Master Vintner, you can uncork or blend something special. Definitely roast chicken. Mmm. Gotta put this in the fridge for later.